Hey y'all, out here at uh, Classic Restorations, um, buddy of mine's place, and uh, they build nice cars. They do some custom work, but they do a lot of uh, restoration work. And I got a 1915 pickup truck, Ford pickup truck. Now I understand, from what I understand, back in the day, these things were sold as coach works. You just bought a chassis and then you took it somewhere and had it built. But they took this one back to the way it was originally done the first time. So anyways, let me run Dustin down and we'll take a look at it. Dustin, how are you, brother? Doing good, Scotty. How you doing? Outstanding. Thanks for inviting me out. Yeah, glad you'd come out. I am too, man. Tell me a little bit about this hot rod. Well, it's a old school hot rod, 1915 Model T Ford truck. Why is it T became before A? I don't. I never understood that either. I, I don't know what what old Henry was thinking of back then. He wanted to be different, I guess. I guess, yeah. So tell me, I mean, uh, what do we got going on here? I mean, is this? I was telling them outside because you told me earlier back in the day when this was made, they were just rolling chassis. As exactly. You, bought, you took it to a coach works place, told them what you wanted to do with it, and they custom built you whatever. Built whatever you, you wanted, yeah. Uh, back, you know, in the first tees, you could get a full closed car, or you bought what they called a chassis, which would come with basically the fenders, running boards, the hood, you know, grill. You had a firewall. All the black stuff. All the black stuff. Right. Yeah, basically all the black stuff, and uh, you basically took it to your local coach builder and they built you whatever you wanted if it was a truck a station wagon a car or you know a clown car whatever right, you wanted right, right. they built it for you i wonder if them chassis came in like different engine sizes and things like that no no back then all you had was you know you had the the only one engine the uh, four cylinder and then you could get different uh you know, basically like nowadays, you can get a you know half ton or one ton. You can get a little stiffer suspension, a oh, heavier, okay. dutier. So they know. all weren't built. A truck, you'd get a stronger something. Yeah, for a truck. Than exactly. A car, I guess. Exactly. Now that seat wasn't back then. Right? No, no, that seat is not original. Uh, the owner he wanted a little more seating capacity whenever he did parades and different things with it. So we built him what we call a toolbox. Right. And uh, see yeah, we can open it up. Yeah. You keep wrenches. Oh, holy yeah. cow. What is yeah. that? Is that like the see, original stuff? That is the original Ford tool set that would have came with the uh, the Model T. Where did you find you that at? Uh, just different swap meets and things. You no always, kidding. You always find uh, the different tools with the Ford lab labeling on it. And uh, anytime we're out and about, we usually try to pick them up. We've done even a couple, if you don't need them. Right? Yeah, we've, yeah, we've done a couple Model T's, and the guys like to have the tools. He's even got the original old air pump he found. Man, there's a map pocket. Yeah, made a map pocket. It's got all That's the. That's an original air pump. Yep, yeah, it's got the. Holy cow, those haven't changed in 200 years. Exactly. They still then look you, like the one you get from Walmart. Then you even got your fuel gauge. Holy cow. So the fuel tank was actually located under the seat on this. So you'd open the cap up, right. you'd drop that down in there, and then you'd read how much fuel you had. Amazing. Yep, Man, very oh very wow. simple. <laughs> yeah, but look, you got the leather to make it look like, oh, yeah. it looks like something that could have came in a truck. Yeah, that's kind of. Minus the leather seat yep. on top of it. Yep, we wanted to keep it all as period correct as possible. Without a question. Now, what kind of condition was this thing in when you got it? It was uh, pretty rough. Uh, we did have to buy a couple of the different panels. The running boards usually rotted out on them. That's pretty typical. Uh, the wood was completely shot. Somebody had sandblasted it at one point in time in its life and ruined it. So we had to, we had enough there to make patterns, but other than that, it was it was all scrap. What so kind of wood is that? This is uh, red oak, is what we used. Is that what they used originally? Yeah, too? that's yeah. what they were used originally. Uh, we got a, a local woodworking company here that we were able to buy a bunch of rough cut limber, right. lumber, and uh, we planed it all down and made it all back to the original thicknesses. So you did the woodwork here too? Yes, yourself? we did all the woodwork here too. Where do you get well. that talent from? Uh, we actually got a employee that works for us that uh, has a little bit of woodworking background and really enjoys doing it. So, uh, you know, we had, had to buy a couple pieces of equipment to be able to do it, but, right. but we were able to get most of it. It's pretty simple cuts and straightforward, but, you know, back then a uh, two by four was actually two inches by four inches. It's right. not like the crap you get today. Right, right. So uh, we Isn't had to actually- funny on something like that? Yeah. Even a two by four, they reduced it and still called it a two by exactly, four, right? They, exactly. they were figuring if we can cut an eighth off here and there, we can save millions of dollars over millions of square feet of lumber. <laughs> But it will still tell them it's a two by four, like it, we're idiots and can't read a tape measure. Right? Exactly, exactly. So and it is now looking at it. Now I can see what you're saying about it being very simple, very straight down the side, yep. and even up here, it's not very fancy. It's just uh, 
utilitarian. It yeah. works. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You get in. And a lot of the stuff we did kind of take some liberties and round some corners and stuff to make it a little cleaner and smoother looking where they wouldn't have really went to that care back then. And the windshield wiper, you have to use by hand? Yep. Hand, hand operated windshield wiper. And you added that mirror? No, the mirror was actually a factory piece. No kidding. Yep, sure was. And it uh, is adjustable too. And then these windows will fall down. Yep, all of its original curtains, they roll down. Um, that would have been something the coach builder would have done when they built it. Uh, and the, when we originally did the car, it didn't have the curtains, and uh, the owner later decided to add them, which is very simple, being wood, you know. Right. Had you already put, the, I guess you didn't put the latches on either. No, we didn't have the snaps on there, so right. we, had to, we had to put them on. And then it does have all stainless hardware and all the woodwork and all that, you know. Look at all the brass on the suspension. What's going on? Yep, there? that is the, the brass error. Uh, as you see, all the little caps, those are the old grease fittings. Uh, what you would do is you'd fill that full of grease, and after you drove so many miles, the, the owner's manual actually told you to turn certain ones one turn or two turns after so many miles no to kidding. grease the suspension. And then you had also the original little little oil caps, oilers, to be able to oil all the other different parts of the suspension. Oh, man. And does it crank start? It, do, it does crank start, but it, this one uh, does have a little later model engine in it, and so it does have an electric starter on it. Was that the hood release? No, that is actually the choke. So whenever you're out here cranking it, oh, you, you could adjust the choke. Right yep. Holy cow, man. Now, when you did you have enough? Because again, with all these being different, what do you do there? Like on the Malibu we shot earlier, you could go back to an orange manual pictures and see, okay, that's what it's supposed to be. But what do you do when you got something custom like this? Well, a lot of it, luckily, the wood and the body was there. So we, we knew what was there and what wasn't. Uh, a lot of the things we added, like the, the cow lights weren't there, but that is period correct. They could have had those. Right. Uh, that was just little dealer installed options, let's call them, that was done, you know. Oh, so they even had accessories back yeah, then. Yeah, they sure did. Even if you notice the, the little bitty foot pedal here on the uh, passenger side, that's the old train whistle that you actually divert the exhaust through a whistle when you're running down the road and it sounds like a train. <laughs> How cool is that? What's in that box? That's uh, the coil packs. Uh, if you've noticed, most newer cars have individual coils. Well. Here's back in the 1900s, this was standard to have individual coils. So you have Holy smokes. four coils that fire each cylinder. Yeah, you got a way to electrocute your buddy too. Exactly. Right there in the front of the truck. Exactly. And then you got an internal choke right here. Holy cow. And what's that, the brake over there? That is the park brake. Parking brake. Is what they consider and that. Said, is that the headlight dimmer? <laughs> No, that is the uh, kill switch for it. We actually put an electronic kill switch oh, on it. In case it gets crazy. Yep. Goes Christine on you. Exactly. <laughs> wow. Man, dude. And the wheels? The wheels are original. They were... Uh, 20s? Back, 21s, actually. 21s. Yeah, from <laughs> the Holy factory. smoke. Yeah, 21s were, from the factory. That's right. They were, they were rolling big back then. But uh, Man, those are a whole, what, four inches wide? Yeah, yeah, you know, big bicycle tires. I got you. <laughs> and all these lights, are they still candles? No, they're not. They have, We have converted those to electric, so it does have running lights front and rear. Um, you know, originally it would have been a candle, so you would have had a, a, to light a wick, and it would have been a kerosene candle there. And the underneath finished as nice as the top. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Where do you put gas in that at? Uh, it's the at seat? Yeah, it's underneath the seat. Huh. So you actually have to take take the seat bottom out, all Right. and then it's underneath there. Oh, I believe you. <laughs> I believe you. What's that, Ooh, some kind of Uga horn or something? Yep, yep. Let's see if we can get it to go. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that you can, you can stand outside and do it. Exactly. Run it from the back. Exactly. So you got yep. cruise control? No, well, actually it does, believe it or not. Uh, all Model Ts are kind of uh, interesting to drive you. If you notice, you have three pedals there, but right. it's not a, a gas clutch and brake. It's not. You got a uh, reverse pedal. Uh, you do have somewhat of a transmission brake, and then you have your forward gears, this pedal here. When it's pushed all the way in, it's in low gear. Right now, it's in neutral, and then when you let out on it completely, you're in high gear. So, if you wanted to keep it in low, you had to keep it down to you the floor? You had to keep it all the way down to the floor, yep. Which one's the gas pedal? The gas pedal is up here. Oh, gas pedal's not even yep. pedal. It's, it's just uh, very similar to a tractor, and then you yes, had your yeah. ignition. You could advance and retard your ignition. Wow. Is the other level. Get a little speed out of it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Tune her up as you yeah, go down yeah. the road. This you, is one of the first turn car, tuner cars right yep, here. Yep. <laughs> you, you can go whopping, you know, 20, 25 mile an hour. Well, now you're <laughs> on bicycle tires. I don't know how fast you're going to go. <laughs> I wouldn't be in a big hurry if I jumped in that, you know? Yeah, it we actually. Like it's, got, it's got a tank underneath it. It does look like it does. Yeah, it that's has cool, that. man. But, uh, so it got like a full chassis and all that? Yes, it does have a full chassis underneath of it. 
Huh. Very simple, you know, utilitarian, very much like a tractor or a, a horse-drawn carriage at the time. Just motorized. Just motorized, exactly. Was that 396 or? Yeah, yeah. Boss 302, yeah, what do we got going yeah. on here? Yeah, that's inline four flathead. Holy smoke, original motor? Original, well, not original no. to this uh, right. truck. It uh, original motor is long gone. This is actually a 1922 model engine. What do you keep the oil can for? Yeah, the oil can right there, that's for your oil and your suspension. Uh, Ford's thought behind that was in the cold winter, you know, oil's thick. Right. If you had it underneath the hood, once you started the vehicle up and let it warm up a little bit, you can grab the oil can and, and oil be it up. Oil Oil it up, you know, nice thin, thin hot oil. Yeah, this is going to be a dumb question, but I'm notorious for asking this. Where's the carburetor on this thing? Carburetor is actually located way down here. Down there. Oh, yes, the and there is no fuel pump on these. Uh, it is a gravity feed system, so if you're going up a steep grade and didn't have a, a full fuel tank, right, you're going to run out of gas. So most people backed up hills back there. Backed up hills. Ay 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 ay, man. And a client happy, I guess. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. tickled to death. Tickled to death. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's uh, he's used it for all kinds of stuff. Uh, his daughters just got married recently, and they used that in all the wedding photos. You know, had the dress hanging off the back. And, oh yeah. And all that fancy stuff. Holy cow! And he actually drove this around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. No kidding. Yep. Uh, we were at a Good Guys event a couple years ago, and uh, had a chance to do a track cruise, and he took it out and went around and. Uh, according to the good guys officials, it was the slowest record lap time at the Indy 500. Man, I like that Napa sign in there too. Yeah, and uh, the owner is actually, uh, the owner of the vehicle owns a local Napa store. So that is the original 1915 Napa logo that they had when they first opened. And it was kind of fitting that the truck's a 15. Right. Uh, he was able, of course, to do some research with through Napa and find the original signage, and we were able to make the the side panels for him to match. You know, kind of make it look like a delivery truck. It does look like a little delivery truck. Yep. Now, do those center caps come off for some reason? Yes, they sure do. That way, you can adjust the tension on your uh, your front hubs. Huh. To keep the wood right or something? Well, not to keep the wood. It's after a while, they eventually back off. So every so many miles, you do a little <laughs> eighth of a turn. I got you. you know, there, there was a lot, uh, back then, there was a lot of maintenance on maintenance. the cars. Maintenance? Yeah, yeah. You can only go 20 miles an hour, but you, yeah. you they wanted you to be safe when you was doing yeah, exactly. it, I guess. Exactly. Man, it's beautiful, that brass and all that. I mean, it's just, you know, it's not usually my thing, but y'all have done such a nice job, and it's such a cool little truck. I just had to shoot it, you yeah. know? Yeah, Man. it stands out anywhere it goes. It's uh, not your typical Model T restoration. No. Now is this is this what you all like to do, or what do you you know what is uh, classic restorations kind of a thing? Well, you know, we I see you do street rides, yeah, hot rides, yeah, we, and then we this. do a little bit of everything. You know, each one of them has their challenges, and uh, you know, each one you know is, is kind of their own their own project. What do you like? Uh, do you like building customs? Do you I, like doing? I, I like doing customs, but then again, you know the the research and some of the oddities and neat things you find when you're doing the uh, restoration, lesson, the history yeah. lesson. Yeah. Exactly. And the car guy, I bet you that's yeah. Cool. It's kind of neat to see, you know, man, why do they do this right. that way then, you know, and and how we've come, how much the vehicle has evolved evolved yeah. in a short period of time what about that ford on the tailgate yeah we added that uh originally it was a more of just a solid piece of wood of course they didn't have the technology back then to do that uh we were lucky and have a good friend that has a, a cnc wood cnc machine and was able to carry the original ford script into the tailgate man that's just a cool truck brother Thank you. If people are interested in getting something like this done, you got a website? Yeah, we sure do. It's uh, classicrestorations-online.com. And you can also find us on Facebook at Classic Restorations of Southern Indiana. Man, Dustin, very cool. You guys do great work, obviously. That's why I'm out here. I don't cover shops that don't do good work. But to see a shop that's able to build a car like this and build some of the customs that you build, that's just not something I see every day. It's one or the other. You know, yep. you, you, because this is a specialty. Yes. And getting yep. it down and knowing how to do that history research and all that and make them, I guess it just, to me, it takes a different mentality to be able to come every day and work on something like that versus building something custom to where yeah. you know it's your creation and this and that. Yeah, you know? yeah there, so. it, doing the restoration, you know, you lose a lot of your, your freedoms, I guess, but right. then again, you know, it's kind of enjoyment to see how it w was back then. And, sure. Well, and you don't have and to. And to improve upon it a, a little can. bit too, if you can, yeah. yeah. 
And the thing is, I guess the nice thing is too, though, is your mind gets to relax on something in this because with a custom, it's always, is that going to look right? Yes. And then how is that going to affect this and that? And then once it's done, you stand back and you look at it, yeah. change. But this, you got a plan. It's like, I don't care how it looks. That's how it looked in 15. That's exactly. how it's going to look exactly. today. So. Yep. And we, we do uh, what they call over restore. So. Right. Well, that's the only way to do one, to be oh, honest yeah. with you. Why would you not? Exactly. If you wanted a rough one, just leave it the way it is. Exactly. Man, beautiful work. Thanks so much for letting me come out. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Folks, there you go. There is a 1915 Ford pickup truck kind of thing. But, <laughs> and I say that because it's like, you know, like Dustin was telling us, these are coach cars, you know, imagine that. But back in the day, one other question, you may know this, back in the day, there was like hundreds of coach companies. Yes, there was quite a few, uh, you know, back then their carriages were still around. So they were still busy doing that and they would do this t as well. Right. Well, and this, this was a new carriage. Yeah. Yeah. And this one was actually built within uh, 20 miles of, of where we're at right now. It was built at uh, Davis Coach Works down in New Albany, Indiana. Holy cow. You know how many owners it had? Uh, I only know of the, the previous owner of this one, or the, the current owner and the one previous owner. I don't know how many before then. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful work. Again, brother, thanks for letting me come out. Thank you. Folks, there you go. Nice little uh, 1915 Ford pickup truck from Classic Restorations. Hope you all have enjoyed it. See ya.